Right, now we've reached your last lesson and we're going to do a, a little group of fruit on a, a, a piece of blue cloth. So, to start off with, we've got to decide how big our group is going to be. Now, first of all, it would be a good idea to measure it with your paintbrush. If I personally like to uh, mark in my uh, objects in my group with a paintbrush and not with a pencil, but some people do like to use a pencil and that's perfectly okay. Now, the we start by trying to find out how many times the height of the group goes into the width. So there we are. That's the height of the group and that goes into the width one and three quarters. Good. So we know now roughly what size our group is going to be. So off we go, we will try and paint it in. And we're going to allow for our apple to be over here. indicated where our apple and the banana is going to be. Now what would be the wisest thing to do would be to paint in the background first. So what is a good idea is to damp the paper first as we discussed once before. So here we go, putting a slight wash of water over the background and letting it soak into the paper. Just plain water to whichever over whichever area you would like it to go. Now, we're going to paint in this plain blue background, rather a lovely colour against the colour of the fruit. The 
idea of damping the background is so that you do not get any hard lines when you add a bit more colour to the mix. It's a good idea to mix as much colour as you could possibly want before you start because if you have to add colour to the mix afterwards you may find that it differs. the pear, well you'll have to allow this to dry before moving on to the next part of the draw painting. Now that your background has dried, you can start to put some colour onto the fruit. Now, the apple is quite a large object in the still life. And the important thing about painting the apple is to remember that you have to leave the highlights. Where the light catches the apple, that is what you've got to leave white. But round this side, you can actually see the pear reflected into the side of the apple. So here we go. Put a very slight tinge of green into the that's it. There we are. Now there is quite a bit of green in the outside of this apple, but I'm mixing a little yellow with the green because 
it is very much a yellowy green. There we go. In the base of the apple you will find that the colours are very much darker than where the light affects it at the top. However, there you are. Now we will put in a little brown colouring at the top of the apple where the little core comes. little dark brown streak to show where the stem is or was rather. Now we will look at painting the pear which is an interesting rather sort of pale greeny yellow really so I think we could do to put a little leaf green in with the yellow colouring that we've got to bring down the colour a little and make it more like the colour of the pears so here we go we will do the light side of the pear first catches the light, we will leave a highlight. We will put 
the shadows in later. But if we put the basic colour right over the body of the pen. Build up the shadows very much darker a little later on. Now we've got to look at the yellow of the banana, which is more of a golden yellow altogether. Up a little more of this gold again, and we will paint the whole of the body of the banana, and any dark patches will be put on later.
Hello, come to putting the shadows on hair. Which are quite dark actually. The result of a winter afternoon. Put in the shadows. Because they are very dark. And the oh. Just soften off the edges. I'm just going to put a faint tinge of yellow on this highlight because I think the evening sun is catching the, the apple. While we don't want to take out the highlights, they do have to reflect the current weather. 